Hello and welcome to the cake tip. Today we're going to be making a Christmas cake that is keto, paleo, gluten free and sugar free. So the first lot of ingredients you're going to need to make your cake is almond flour. Um, you're also going to need some tapioca flour. Because this is keto, we can't use any grains in this cake. Tapioca flour or arrowroot, whichever you prefer to call it. You're also going to need some gluten-free baking powder. Now you're going to use stevia to replace your sugar in this cake. I will put the list of ingredients and all of the quantities in the description underneath the video. You're also going to need a Christmas spice mix, which I will put down in underneath the video as well. These are just things like cinnamon, nutmeg and mixed spice. The first thing that you're going to do with this group of ingredients is you're going to pop it into a food processor and process it just for about 10 to 20 seconds just to combine all of it together so it's nice and fine. You can pop them into your food processor bowl in any order. There's no particular order it requires to do. Just like I say, for 10 to 20 seconds. When you remove your bowl from the food processor, the mix should look like this. So it looks and smells a little bit like a normal flour mix. Now you just need to pop that bowl to the side for a moment whilst we prepare the next stage. You're going to need a large bowl, either from a standalone mixer or if you're going to do it by hand, just a normal bowl. And you're going to place um, room temperature butter into the bowl. When you have all of the butter in the bowl, just pop it into your standalone mixer and beat it for two to three minutes until it's really soft. Scoop it down into the center, ready to add the next ingredients. Then you're going to add a couple of teaspoons of vanilla bean. The reason I'm using vanilla bean and not vanilla extract is just because of the sugar content sometimes in vanilla extracts that you buy from the shop. So we're trying to reduce that down as much as possible. Once again, pop it back onto your standalone mixer or beat it by hand for roughly two to three minutes until the vanilla bean is completely combined. Then you're going to need a eight inch round tin and you're going to line the bottom of the tin only. No need for wrapping for this Christmas cake. Once your vanilla bean is completely combined, so the next ingredients you're going to add is two tablespoons of your flour mix that you made earlier. The reason that we're putting this into the butter now is so that when we add the egg, it doesn't curdle. Mix again for just a minute, and then we're going to add the next ingredients. We're going to add three eggs to this ingredients, but one at a time. If you're doing it by hand, you need to do one egg, then beat, and then the next egg. If you're doing it on standalone mixer, have it running and do one egg at a time. Once you've finished, your mix should look like this. So it hasn't curdled, but it's come together, lov come together lovely. This part of the mix is actually really important. If you don't get the base right, that when it comes to going in the oven, you won't get the rise that you want out of it. And because we're using quite heavy flours, it really does need to be done correctly. Next, we're going to prepare our nuts. For this mix, we're going to be using just a small amount of Brazil and walnuts, because these are really low in carbs. We don't want to make these um, really fine. We just want to roughly chop them. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves a bag, a sealed bag, and pop our nuts into the bag. Now, I'm a real one for the environment, so if you're doing this with a bag, please, re please reuse this bag afterwards. So seal your bag, try to make sure there's not much air in there, and then just find yourself a meat mallet. With the meat mallet, just use it on the flat side 
and you're literally just going to bash it a little bit just to break the nuts up. You don't want them really fine because you want to get that crunch when you're eating the cake. Once you've finished breaking all of your nuts up, they should look roughly like this. So you've got little chunky bits in there, which are gonna be absolutely fantastic when you're taking a bite out of the cake, giving it more of a Christmassy type of feel. Please remember to reuse your plastic bags. I wash my plastic bags and I send my kids to school with them over and over again. Grab the bowl back that has your mix in it and we're now going to add to this mix the nuts and the remaining flour. So pour all of your remaining flour into the bowl. Followed by the nuts that you've just broken up. So just pour them in straight on top of the flour mix. Now I know I'm nagging, but please reuse your plastic bags. Okay, now you're going to pop this back onto your standalone mixer or do it by hand, and you're just going to combine it until it looks like this. This has come together lovely. This is a real thick base, strong base for your Christmas cake. Now you're going to be adding your yogurt. This is plain Greek yogurt. You want the lowest sugar content that you can find. Um, any vanilla or anything like that added to a yogurt will increase the sugar content. So just go for plain yogurt. Just pop that all into the bowl. Just beat it for 20 to 30 seconds until it's fully combined and looks like this. The next lot of ingredients we're going to be adding to our mix is some blackberries and raspberries. These have a fantastically Christmassy taste when they're mixed with the spices and also because they are super low in sugar. When these berries go into the mix, they will not only flavour the cake, they will also colour the cake and leave little chunks left as well. The next thing we're going to add is some orange and lime zest to it, just to give us that real Christmassy taste to add to it. Once again, you're just going to beat this for 20 to 30 seconds. You want the fruit to fully incorporate, but not disappear. This is exactly how you want it to be. So it's colored, but it also has chunks left in it, which is exactly how a Christmas cake is with dried fruit. Next, you're going to pop it into your tin and you can pour that all the way into the center and then we'll spread it out afterwards. You'll need your oven preheated to 150 degrees fan and it will need to go in the oven for roughly one hour and 20 minutes to one hour and 30 minutes. You'll be able to see whether it's done or not, but whether it springs back to the touch and if it's pulling away from the sides of the tin. Using the back of a spoon, you're just going to spread the cake batter all the way to the edges of the tin and smooth it off nicely because we're going to decorate the top of this cake before it goes into the oven. Okay, so the top of the cake is lovely and smooth and it's ready for us to decorate. I'm choosing to decorate the top of this with some sliced almonds and I'm literally going to make a little pattern all the way around the outside. But you can make whatever pattern you want to with this because you won't be icing it because obviously you don't want to be using sugar. Um, so I'm choosing to do this just around the outside and then I'm going to crunch up some of the almonds and pop them into the center.
It's super easy to crunch up the almonds. You literally pop them into the palm of your hand and just squeeze until they start to crack and then just sprinkle them over the center of the cake. I'm also going to try and pop a little bit of color onto this cake. And the way I'm going to do that is with some beetroot powder and some spirulina powder powder which is green but you can use any green powder that's perfectly fine because these are christmasy colors you're adding some goodness to your cake without any sugar or badness going on there and still keeping your christmas theme Once you're happy with the decoration of your cake, pop it into the centre of the oven and allow it to bake for roughly an hour and 20 to an hour and 30 minutes. When you, the cake comes out of the oven, allow it to cool in the tin completely. Thanks for watching this video and please remember to subscribe for all future videos of keto, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free and more.